welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. What a great blessing to have you study Paul's epistle of joy in troubling times. Now I'm standing at the ancient ruins of Philippi. Now you'll notice the lovely mountain range to my back. Philippi was located in a fertile plain that sat east of Mount Penginus. Now the city was surrounded by mountains on three sides and Philippi was a prosperous Roman colony due to gold mines being nearby. Now in the first century, Philippi was the leading Roman city in the province of Macedonia. Paul planted a church right here during his second missionary journey. Now Acts 16 tells us that Paul and his associate Silas were jailed here at Philippi for preaching the word of God. Now despite the troubling times Paul experienced here, he left an eternal mark on the lives of many of its citizens. A strong and loving church was born in Philippi. Now, later the believers cared for Paul when he suffered troubling times of imprisonment in Rome. Now, speaking of imprisonment, let me share a story I read some time ago. A Georgia man spent the night in jail because he called 911 to complain about his McDonald's order. He ordered seven McDoubles, one McChicken, and one McFry. Now, when he returned to his truck, and of course, a good Georgia boy would be driving a truck, he was short one McDouble. So he returned to the restaurant where he got into an argument with the store McManager, and he said that he was going to call the police, so he dialed 911 rather than the police. Now, this mixed story illustrates make life pretty well. Don't lose your mick grip just because you were shorted a McDouble. Life can get much worse. Oh, my attempt of humor. But now let's move on to a more serious note. Let's continue to study this great epistle of joy in troubling times. So I'm going to ask you to turn to Philippians chapter 4 with me, please. The fourth chapter of Philippians. Now, there is joy in troubling times when Christ's followers stand firm. Now, I want us to just get our arms around uh, this truism. Uh, there is joy, even in times like the COVID-19 crisis, and when, when we stand firm in the Lord. You see, you experience joy from other believers. Look at chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, my beloved brethren, whom I long to see, my joy and crown, and this way stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. Now, you can feel Paul's pastoral heart in this verse, can't you? You see, Paul calls them my beloved brethren. And he said he longed to see them. He indicated that they were his joy. You see, just like we saw in chapter 1, the believers in the Philippi brought Paul joy in troubling times. Then he said they were his crown. Now, this is an interesting term. The word crown here is Stephanos in Greek. There's two words for crown in the Greek New Testament. One is the diadem, and the diadem was a crown worn by a king. You see this given reference in the Revelation. But Stephanos, which also is used in the book of the Revelation, was the victor's crown. You see, it gave Paul joy to know that the believers at Philippi were victors and overcomers. And what joy he had as a pastor of these dear, dear saints. Now, you experience joy as you stand firm. First, we must continue to be connected with other believers. And then he says that we must stand firm in our faith. You know, there is no more miserable life than a believer that vacillates. I mean, up and down makes for a good theme park ride, but a terrible life for a believer. You see, stand strong, my brothers and sisters. Joy will come. Now, joy is diminished when there is dissension among believers. Look at chapter 4, verse 2. I urge Judea and I urge Syndike to live in harmony in the Lord. Now, Paul identified two spiritual sisters who were just going at it. 
Now, what's interesting is that they both shared in Paul's struggle with the gospel, and they both worked in the gospel. I mean, these ladies were committed and were core, we would say, church members and servants of the Lord. However, they were causing dissension, and defeat was on the horizon. Now, my brothers and sisters, live in harmony with other believers. Because discord can easily discourage you. It will thwart you and deplete your joy. Now, let's move on to verse 3. There is joy in being a peacemaker. Look at verse 3. And the true companion, I ask you also to help these women who have shared my struggle and the cause of Christ. I just spoke about that a moment ago. Together with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Now, Paul here identifies a group of believers at the church at Philippi who could serve as peacemakers among Judea and Syndicate. Now, first he mentions his true companion. Now, some versions translate this as yoke fella. Some scholars believe that this was a proper name, not so much a title, but a name. Others believe that Paul was speaking of a loyal ministry assistant. Well, whatever he particularly uh, thought of by the use of this word, he then identifies Clement, a church leader, and then other fellow workers in the church. You see, the point here is that Paul was enlisting some key believers in this church to unite these women. You see, all of us can serve in this capacity. All of us have a role to assume when there's dissension in the body of Christ. So let me ask you, how well do you get along with other believers? Now, the answer to this question will impact your level of Christian joy. Now, there are times, my brothers and sisters, when we must resist the temptation to cast blame and to engage in unnecessary disputes. Stand firm and get along with fellow brothers and sisters. It is the way to joy in troubling times. Now, in addition to standing firm, Paul then tells us to live in God's peace. There is joy in troubling times when Christ Followers live in God's peace. Let's read verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Now, let me just stop here for a moment. This chapter begins with the word finally. Once again, Paul intended to conclude his epistle of joy. Now, the, the, the sentiment of these verses is like, Paul had so much more to say, so he did a joy dump on the believers. Now, in these verses to follow, we have short, pithy statements about how to live uh, the Christian life with peace and joy. Now, let's look at these verses one by one. I just read verse 4, but I want us to, to look at it again. Jo rejoice in the Lord always. Look again. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say Rejoice. Now, when troubling times come, it's just difficult to be happy. But Paul doesn't say to be happy here. What does he say? He told them to rejoice in the Lord. Chapter 3 began with the admonition to rejoice in the Lord, and so does chapter 4. You see, we find joy in the Lord. And we need reminded, as Paul was doing here, I'm telling you yet again, rejoice in the Lord. You know, our circumstances may be dismal and cause us to feel sad. However, the Lord is always good. And we can take delight in him. Because he is good and does what is good in our lives. You see, when we rejoice in the Lord, our anxiety is relaxed. <laughs> you know, worry comes from focusing on negative circumstances. But joy comes in focusing on the Lord. Now, just as Paul had joy in troubling times of his imprisonment, we can have joy amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. You'll say, how so? We can rejoice in the Lord. Even though external circumstances are unfavorable, the Lord who lives in us, that source of joy and peace in us, brings us that great quality of Christian life. Now let's move on to verse 5. Live with a gentle attitude. 
Now you can see uh, these are pithy statements, as I mentioned a moment ago. The book of James actually was uh, followed somewhat of that same format. It, they, they were just small, concise um, truisms. Oftentimes, there's not even a real clear connection. But what Paul is doing here, as I mentioned earlier, is that he wants to express as much as he possibly can uh, in a very short period of time. So let's look at verse 5. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Live with a gentle spirit. Spirit, live with a gentle attitude. You see, this describes an interquality to our lives. Although the storms rage on the outside, our inside is filled with a tranquil and gentle spirit. Notice that Paul said that our gentle attitude was to be known to all men. You know, people pick up on our attitude very easily. Even though gentleness comes from the inside, it soon makes its way to the service for everyone to see. Now, we all know people who make demands and push themselves on others. You know, they have a little joy in their lives. Their coarse behavior is offensive. My friends, in order to have joy, live a gentle life. Now, at the end of this verse, Paul gives yet another little brief admonition. He said, the Lord is near. What he meant by that is, he's watching us. A little extra motivation. Now moving to verse six, we are to pray. Look what it says in verse six. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, that your requests be made known to God. Now prayer is the byproduct of trust in God. Prayerlessness is the byproduct of trusting yourself or someone else. What do you call a person who completes medical school and graduates at the bottom of the class? A doctor. <laughs> you see, we just need to trust God. If you find yourself living with anxiety in troubling times, then trust the Lord. He is your source of joy. Now, in this verse, Paul uses four words to describe how to pray in troubling times. So let's look at these real quickly. The word prayer is a general term for a believer who approaches God. Uh, we would uh, apply this term by simply saying, just pray. It's, it's the most general, basic uh, term for prayer. The second word here is supplication. It's also translated petition in some versions. It describes a believer who makes a special request to God. Now, the third term used here is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a prayer that expresses heartfelt appreciation to God. Now, the fourth and final word he uses here is the word request. It indicates that a believer asks for something very uh, definitive and very specific. You see, these four terms suggest that we believers should just pray. However we choose to approach our loving Heavenly Father, we should pray. In troubling times, your heart can be heavy. So pray and trust the Lord, and your heart will have an abundance abundant supply of peace and joy. Thank be to the Lord. Now, let's move on. Live in the Lord's peace. Look at verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, all understanding, as some versions say, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, Paul wrote this as though the Lord's peace is available to, for the taking. I mean, you don't have to work for it. You don't have to earn it. It's a gift from our generous and gracious Savior, the Lord Jesus. Now, do you want the peace of God to flood your troubled soul? Of course you do. Then reach out and claim this gift from the Lord Jesus. Now, peace comes from salvation. I, I want you to listen carefully because we are so focused on achievement and on earning a way, but I want you to see that peace comes with the gift of salvation. Jesus was born to bring peace. Luke chapter two, verse 14. 
You see, he came to bring peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Ephesians 2 verse 14 says that Jesus is our peace. If you have Jesus, you have peace. Why? He is peace. Romans 5 1 says that God's peace comes to every child of God through being justified by faith. If you are justified, if you are a reborn child of God, you should live in his peace. It's his gift to you. It's what he desires you to experience. Now, Paul said that his peace transcends all human understanding. In other words, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to us humans. But you know what? I'm okay with that. His peace guards our hearts and minds. And as long as that gift takes residence in my life, I don't need to understand it. I'm delighted. I'm glad that my God can do greater things than what I can understand. Now, I like this phrase that his, 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 his peace is, is, uh, is a guard over us. Like a soldier that guards a garrison, God's peace guards our hearts and minds so that we have joy in troubling times. I mean, just, just imagine a, a, a Roman a soldier standing uh, in, in, in formation and, and guarding the, the, the garrison. And so God gives us his peace as a protector and as a sovereign guarantor that we will have peace in troubling times. Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters. What good news. Now, verse 8 tells us to dwell on these things. Dwell on them. Let's read verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if any worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Now, Paul once again begins this verse by the use of the word finally. He is just about to close this joy epistle. <laughs> now, Paul offers six qualities for believers to assimilate in their lives. Now, let's look at each one. Uh, each individual quality uh, is introduced with the word whatever. And these qualities, just to make certain that you understand and we're being clear, gives us his peace and joy. So let's look at them quickly. Whatever is true. You see, we believers must embrace all that is honest and reliable. We're into the truth, aren't we? If the truth sets us free, so said Jesus. Number two, whatever is honorable. Now, we believers must embrace that which is worthy of respect. Number three, whatever is right. We believers must conform to God's holy and righteous standards. Number four, whatever is pure. We believers must live holy and wholesome lives before God and man. And number five, whatever is lovely. We believers must promote peace, promote goodwill, promote that very positive uh, qualities of the kingdom of Christ. Number six, whatever is of good repute. We believers are to live admirable and positive lives before God and man. You see, these are the qualities we are to think on, dwell on these things. And Paul said these qualities are excellent and worthy of praise. Yes, they are. You see, they naturally bring peace and joy in the lives of believers in troubling times. So let me ask you, what do you dwell on throughout the day? Do you dwell on the kids and hope they're doing well? You see, kids are all that some mothers think about through the day. Maybe you find yourself dwelling on how you're going to pay the bills. Boy, this is ever, is ever a joy killer, isn't it? I mean, maybe you, you think about how good it would be if you uh, felt better or didn't have to deal with all the troubling circumstances that you're faced with day by day, especially in this pandemic. But my brothers and sisters, I want you to know there is a better way to live. There is a way that leads to peace. There is a way that leads to joy. Think on these things, my brothers and sisters. These are the pathway that God has given us. Think on these things. Now, our final verse is verse 9. Do what you have learned to do. I love this verse. Let's read it together. The things you have, now listen carefully, learned and received and heard 
and seen in me, practice these things. And the God of peace will be with you. You see, not only does a life of joy require proper thinking, it also requires proper deeds. Now, Paul once again told the believers at Philippi to follow his example. You see, they had learned, they had received, they had heard, and they had seen the right works in Paul's life. Now, if they follow Paul's example, they would experience the same peace and joy that Paul experienced even while in Roman prison. And my brothers and sisters and my friends, there is no need to wait for joy in troubling times. Don't put it off. Don't say, well, maybe one of these days. You know, it would be nice, but I'm not quite ready yet. Listen, don't put it off. Paul gives us a clear road map and we can follow it. We must stand firm in the faith and we must live in his peace. I mean, if we will just do these two things, we'll be much further down the pathway of a life of joint troubling times. Stand firm in the faith and live in his peace. Now, the question we face this evening right now is obedience to the word of God. Are we just simply going to say, well, yeah, I kind of agree with that. and makes uh, sense, and, and I acknowledge that is Holy Scripture. But I want you to know we must be doers of the word. You see, he has not left us without a clear direction. We must follow God's pathway to a life of joy in troubling times. So let me ask you, will you, will you make a commitment right now? Right now. Don't put it off. Don't wait. Don't kick the can down the road. Will you make a commitment right now to say, Lord, I want to live a life of joy. And I know there are issues that are about me and circumstances that are unfavorable. I'm struggling a bit economically, financially. There's some relational challenges I seem to be faced with from, from time to time, especially now. But Lord, I'm not going to wait. I want to live a life of joy right now. It can be so in your life. Follow God's pathway. Now, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God would awaken these, the truths of these incredible verses of joy and peace in your life and in your mind and heart. I want to pray that God would illuminate his holy word in your soul and you would be motivated and willing and desirous to apply these truths to your life and your heart so that you will be a light to others who's finding, pursuing at least, a life of joy in troubling times. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would be with my brothers and sisters as they study your holy word and as they find themselves on the journey of life and now facing such hardship in the COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, what an illustration of what Paul must have felt, at least in some degree, about his unjust imprisonment. But Lord, help us to follow his example these incredible holy truths from your sacred word. Lord, that we would live in joy and live in peace. Live, Lord, above the negative, terrible circumstances that life has brought us. Father, I pray for men and women, boys and girls that are studying tonight that, uh, Lord, just have never connected with you. Lord, they don't know you. They, they perhaps are interested because they're studying your word, but Lord, there is a loss, an emptiness, a hole, Lord, in their souls, and I pray right now that they would call out to you in faith right now, even at this moment, and say, Lord, save me. Save me from my sin. Come into my life, Jesus, because I want you in my life, because with you there's life and joy and peace. Lord, those believers that have made that commitment, but Lord, uh, find themselves a bit battle-scarred because of all the, the pressures and challenges that they're facing now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, lighten their burden, lift the load, O oh God, because your word is so true. We follow a Savior who's paid the price. We, have fo we follow the Lord Jesus who uh, has made a way for a new life as a child of the most holy God. Now, Father, we just trust you. We give our lives to you. We follow your, your word. 
Lord, we, we, we accept the admonitions of Holy Scripture. So, Lord, bless my brothers and sisters and my friends. And, Lord, may this word bring great fruit in their lives. And we give you thanks. In Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for studying God's word with us uh, this evening. Uh, join us this Sunday for an inspirational time of worship. Now, we'll continue to follow our level two pandemic response this Sunday. Now, this means that we'll have in-person worship right here in the worship center uh, this Sunday at 1045. But that will be our only public gathering uh, this week. All other studies, all other worship experiences, all other ministries will occur online. Now, don't miss this Sunday. We will continue the sermon series entitled, Where Do We Go From Here? You see, I believe, I'm convinced that the Lord is preparing us for what's to come. And this pandemic is giving us a little taste of what believers will experience in the end. So we will continue studying out of the book of Revelation. So join us this Sunday. Now, as we return to in-person worship here at Liberty, we use strict social distancing protocols. However, if you are at high risk and are, are uncomfortable gathering, then join us for our online streaming, uh, either, of course, on Facebook or YouTube. Now, next Wednesday at 6.30, we'll, co we'll conclude our study on the book of Philippians. Boy, it seems like we just began it not long ago. Uh, once again, you'll um, be able to access our study online as we've been doing the last several weeks. So continue to study this great book, the Holy Bible, and this epistle of joy, and learn how to have joy in troubling times. God bless you. We love you. And pursue the way of Christ. Bye now.